Okay. Okay. Good evening, students. So, welcome back to this image based question, MCQ question in community medicine. And uh, let me check whether I am audible or not, or all those stuff. Yes, I think I am audible. Yes. Okay. So, today also we will be taking the discussion forward and uh, uh, we'll be discussing what are the possible image based questions in uh, in community medicine so let's start and uh, you know let's uh, let's not waste time and take questions okay if students can you see the first question the first question is interpretate the image and calculate Delhi for the given case okay so you have given an image and you have to calculate Delhi for the given age okay so can you answer this question can you answer the question you have the image is a, uh, just take an example a, a child was a child has taken born and then he it went on a you know its whole lifespan is showing the red bars the red bars are period when the person was disabled okay the red bars are the period when the person was disabled and it has go it has been uh, the disability weight has been given so 0.5 is for two years so if you can if, you can, if i can show you yeah wait so these are the red bars sorry so these are the red bars so red bars is the period of disability and the disability weight is given okay and the other the not red bars are period when the child when the person was in perfect health okay so can you tell me what will be the possible answer I means how do you calculate daily it is 19.5 daily 18 daily 17 daily or uh, 16 daily so can you tell me what will the answer? Anyone? If I can see. Can anyone can anyone answer the question? Okay. Now let's let me uh, let me explain this. So what is DALI? DALI is disability adjusted life years. Okay. Now a picture is showing that a child was child has taken born he lives in perfect health after a certain period of time you know uh, he is he is suffering from certain disease so he is in a morbid condition for example 2 years and the disability weight is 0.5 then he lives in a perfect health again the child is sick and you know the disability weight is 0.2 and the year is 1 year Again, the child is, sick, uh, is in perfect health. Again, the child is sick. The red bars is showing sick color and the disability weight is given. Normally, the life expectancy was 65 years. It was expected that the person is going to live 65 years, but the person died at 50, 50 years. So how do you calculate DALI? So if I, if, if I can repeat, DALI is disability adjusted life years. So it measures both morbidity and mortality. Okay, it measures both morbidity and mortality. Now let's take mortality and morbidity first. Let's take mortality first. Now the person was expected to live till 65 years, but the person died at 50 years. So what is the year lost due to premature death? So you have to subtract 50 from 65 so you get the value as 15 okay so this is your year lost due to premature death uh, premature death so that is 15 dailies 15, one daily is equal to one life year lost so here what is happening since the person has died at 50 years he was expected to live till 65 years but unfortunately he died at 50 years so the life lost due to mortality is 15 years 
so that 15 years is a daily due to mortality okay but daily also include morbidity part also now you have to see the morbidity part also let's take the uh, i'll just explain this so what this mortality age at death was 50 the person was expected to live at 65 but he died at 50 so the uh, means life year lost is 50 now coming to the morbidity part if you see the morbidity part all the red bars are the period when the child was when the person was sick so first of all the child was sick or the person was sick at for two years he was not able to perform his major activities in was a morbid condition so his disability weight is 0.5 now it's his disability weight is 0.5 so you have to multiply the duration of illness with the disability weight so if you multiply 0.5 by 2 so you get the uh, means disability adjustment for this period similarly you have to multiply it for 0.2 into 1 0.6 into 5 0.3 into 2 years so similarly you get disability adjustment for entire period when he was sick so he was sick for I means morbidity pattern which contributes to daily is 4.5 daily now if you add this 4.5 daily to 15 daily it becomes 19.5 daily so this is the way we calculate daily da is basically you now it accounts to morbidity life year loss is is uh, basically it accounts to mortality now life year see 65 minus 15 becomes 15 dailies and disability adjustment is just those red bars where the person was sick person was not able to perform his major activities so that is disability adjustment and you have to give a disability weight every period you have to give a disability weight that is between 0 to 1 so this is the way you calculate your daily am i clear students am i clear okay so uh, let me see any anyone any any questions you have okay I'm not able to see any questions today okay now let's take the second question the second question is a scatter diagram was plotted as shown below to study the relationship between two quantitative variables okay we have two quantitative variables x axis and y axis so the pattern of graph is like this you know it's like a inverted uh, bell shaped so what is correct interpretation of this qu two quantitative variables there is a correlation between the two variables and the Pearson coefficient is one first of all this is the uh, this is the option second is there is correlation between two variables and the Pearson coefficient is minus one there is no linear correlation between the two variables and there is no association between two variables so what will be the answer okay just see two quantitative variables x axis and y axis was plotted and the graph when it plotted just because of their correlation it is showing a in, in a bell shaped curve so what do you think is there a correlation where there is a Pearson coefficient one or is there is a correlation when there is a Pearson coefficient minus one there is no linear correlation or there is no association so whenever you get this type of graph you have to just think what is correlation one variable is, is affecting the other variable so there's there can be positive uh, uh, means correlation there can be negative correlation if one is increasing other will also increase so if you see in this graph only if I can show you if you see till half portion as the x axis moves the y axis is also moving so there there has been a positive correlation till this point till this point but what happens after this as the x axis moves the y the value gets gets down so from here you can say from here it was positive relation correlation but from here it is a negative correlation so in one graph so there cannot be positive or you have to only choose one positive correlation or negative correlation so if you get this type of graph so there is no positive correlation there is no negative correlation so there is no linear correlation between two variables you cannot say that the correlation between two variables is linear this is the way you interpret this okay so the option becomes there is no linear correlation between the two variables now to make it better uh, for you so just take this this thing 
now just see this graph as this values is move as you move on x axis and you, you see that there is a co linear correlation and it is positive correlation if x axis is increasing y axis is also increasing now if you see in b as you as your x axis is moving y the value is decreasing so there is a correlation there is a positive correlation there is a positive correlation and here it is a negative correlation but when you see c d and e there is no uniform linear correlation you cannot say that there is a uniform correlation uh, see sometime it increase sometime it decrease here you see it's like a it's a zigzag uh, pattern so you cannot link this two i uh, mean uh, this linear correlation or uh, so c d and e are linear uh, means non linear correlations so whenever one value is affecting the other in the entire period of time so that can be said linear here you can say it is positive here you can say negative but this c d and e you cannot say there is a co uh, uh, linear correlation okay now just for you just to make it more clear what is perfect positive correlation when your co correlation coefficient is plus 1 means one value is directly proportional to the other means one value will increase other will also increase now what is perfect negative correlation there is rise in one variable leads to fall in other, uh, fall in the other variable one value is increasingly increasing the other value is decreasing so that is uh, means inversely proportional you can say moderate positive correlation okay there is a correlation but it's not you cannot say it is directly co proportional then you have moderate negative correlation there is uh, means correlation in opposite direction but it is not perfectly negative then no ab absent code there is no correlation and then last is also false correlation you are trying to exhibit a correlation where actually it is not a correlation so that is spurious co uh, correlation or false correlation okay so these are the I means terminology which you need to understand when you when we talk about correlation okay okay now students can you tell me this is an international death certificate there has been many confusion in this i just want to uh, see whether you have understood this in spirit or not so in international death certificate what is the question saying what is the main underlining cause of death okay now if you see so you have to okay i i am able to see your comments also now so it will be good for me to answer your question so arjun kumar sir isn't last value 0.3 into 2 okay that let me clarify to you 0.3 into 2 yes absolutely that is 0.3 into 2 yes absolutely right that is a typo error so you don't uh, that is a typo error but this is the way you calculate daily okay well uh, well identified well identified very good means you have to multiply the duration of illness with the uh, you know uh, the disability weight and then you calculate the morbidity part of daily good very good so it becomes quite important to see the you know the reactions and the feedback of student also okay now coming to this question there has been you know quite a quite lot of confusion so just you have to answer this students can you tell me uh, what is the main underlining cause of this so have anyone answered this no the picture is showing in international health death certificate what is the main underlining cause of death is it renal failure it is diabetes mellitus it is diabetic nephropathy or it is uh, what you say uh, hypertension so can anybody answer this i'll just wait for the options also if anyone can answer okay let's not waste time so if you get this type of question where you have 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D filled. Now for you students, this is the what it is written on the death certificate also. This is the direct renal failure is the direct leading cause of the death. Okay. Now I think Dharminder, uh, Dharminder have answered, has answered correctly. He is saying the main underlining cause is diabetes mellitus. Now why I have put this question 
because there are four in one section the one um, one section the half of the section is 1a 1b 1c 1d so 1a is the direct leading cause of death b is the underlining cause and c is the main underlining cause which is also called essence of death, death certificate and you have d also and then you have an indirect option here which is which is hypertension here okay indirect factor uh, contributing to the death now when you have this type of question where only where where the death certificate is filled till c the main underlining cause is c which you or people are answering so the answer becomes c no problem in this now what now the next question if you see if you see you have a section also filled b is also filled c is also filled d is also filled now students if you if i ask you now what is the main underlining cause of this now can anybody say so now your your a is also filled b is also filled c is also filled d is also filled and you you are in this high the indirect cause is also filled so can you tell me in this question which is the main underlining cause of death Uh, so Arjun Kumar is saying C metastatic deposits of liver. Okay, now this is the reason two back-to-back -back questions on international death certificate. The reason be uh, is that if if your one D is also filled, if your one D is also filled, students, then your main underlining cause is primary adenocarcinoma of ascending colon here. Now just try to link it. Just try to think. What is the main reason of death? intraperitoneal hemorrhage direct relation just because of this the patient died why this intraperitoneal hemorrhage have happened just because there was a rupture of metastatic deposit in liver now where from where this metastatic deposit of liver came so there it was metastatic some from somewhere it came so there was a deposit metastatic deposit in liver and that ruptured from where this metastatic deposit in liver came that came from adenocarcinoma of ascending colon so ultimately the what is the main reason main underlining cause of death here based on the death certificate field is primary adenocarcinoma of ascending colon so your answer will be primary adenocarcinoma of ascending colon not metastatic deposits of liver now why i am try what i am trying to emphasize emphasize is that when you, when you get a question on international death certificate and if only one c if it is filled till one c then your 1c is the main underlining cause you go ahead with that but if you have a international death certificate where the death certificate is filled till 1d then go with 1d don't go with 1c this is the uh, the 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 difference between then i want to emphasize if you get this question please answer 1d uh, means uh, primary adenocarcinoma of ascending colon don't answer metastatic deposit in liver okay okay now this is the easiest one identify the statistical diagram shown in the photograph it is bar chart is it histogram is it pol frequency polygon is it ojai ojai kar come on arjun harish dharmendra others those who are those who are participating easiest one so based on the image shown which type of chart it is? it is is it a bar chart is it a histogram is it a frequency polygon is it a ojive curve so if you first of all it's not a bar chart it is a histogram it is not a bar chart yes harish is absolutely right it is a histogram it is not a bar chart have you seen a bar chart very close to this line like this no it's not bar chart it's a histogram so it is a graphical representation of presentation of continuous quantitative data and what you do the conti means continuous quantitative data you are taking it so continuous groups are marked on x axis while frequencies are marked on y axis so this is the frequency number of women this is the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration so this is this if you get this type of graph it is not bar chart it is histogram okay now the easiest one identify the statistical diagram shown in photograph pie chart pictogram scatter diagram ojai so what type of what type of uh, chart it is it is a pie chart 
इज इट अ पिक्टोग्राम इज इट अ स्कैटर डायग्राम और इट इज अ ओजाइव कर सो जस्ट सी इट इज अ सर्किल यू हैव ट्वेंटी परसेंट ये एटी परसेंट नो दिस इज दिस नॉर्मली वेन वी डू अ प्रेजेंटेशन वी मेक सच to show the you know percentage value how many people are agreeing how many people are not agreeing so just 100% we take 100% as the entire circle and then you have to <coughs> and 20% is saying yes 80% is saying just if i take an example also here so and how many people agree with pie chart so 80% agrees 20% doesn't agree for 80% doesn't agree 20% agree so you are trying to show 100% data in pie charts in in a picture so this is example of pie chart so we'll not waste time here this is easiest one now this will test you question this this is the graph this is the picture now you have one one graph like this where n means sample is 1000 one one first graph second graph is where sample is 800 third graph where sample is 600 okay now order for the margin of error in the graph given above is what is the order for the margin of error is it 3 greater than 2 greater than 1 is it 3 less greater than 1 greater than 2 it is 1 greater than 2 greater than 3 it is 1 is equal to 2 is equal to 3 so i'll just explain the question the standard error of mean your standard error which you calculate <coughs> so you have to just based on the graph can you tell me which which will have more error which graph will have more error which graph will have less error so options you have got here 3 will have more error than 2 2 will have more error 3 uh, will have more error than 2 2 will have more error than 1 second option is 3 will have more error than 1 1 will have more error there than 2 so sombir dagar has said a okay anybody else with dif any different opinion anjani is also saying a good now best way to understand this is what is the sample what is standard error standard error is standard deviation divided by square root of sample size now even if you don't remember standard error formula also what is the basic concept of st statistics whenever we do as uh, research any art when you are doing a study so we take sample so when we take sample it is said every time you will hear that your sample should be good enough it should be equal representation of the population so why not take a adequate sample so what is that adequate sample it's very difficult to predict what is that adequate sample so one line there every teachers add that if you have more sample size as the sample size increases the margin of error the stand the error margin of error decreases margin of error decreases just think in this way if you uh, if why there is no statistical statistic test applied in census data why because you count each and every member of the country so there is no need of doing it so you are counting every member in the population but you it's when you are doing a research when you are doing a study it's not possible to take the entire population of the community so you take a representation a sample from that so sample need to be adequate so as the sample increases the margin of error decreases now you see the third graph has got 600 sample second graph has got 800 sample first graph has got 1000 sample so definitely the margin of error will be more in 3 than in 2 than in 1 this is the logic simple as you increase the sample size your margin of error will decrease so margin of error will be less in 1 than in 2 than in 3 okay so all those students who have answered a is absolutely correct i hope it is clear increase the sample size error will be less so one has got the most has got 1000 sample size the error will be least then two then three this is the way you correlate this graph am i clear okay i think it's is simple no doubt in this okay now just see this you have to see what type of uh, this is a graph given below and this is the image if i may say so what is true about this image it is negatively skewed is it positively skewed it mean is less than median or mean is less than mode 
so you have to base on this image you have to say that it is negatively skewed is it positively skewed mean is less than median mean is less than mode so to answer this question first of all do we understand what is what the image is if you don't understand the image what type of image it is then it is then it's it's not possible to answer the question so, so first of all the image is a it's a box and whisker plot it's a way of representing a huge amount of data in a in a in a in a graphical representation so it is a box and a whisker plot now which is box which is whisker now you can see this is the box okay and this is the whisker the line is the whisker so this is the box and the whisker plot and you have a line here which is shown in the image now this is a box and whisker plot so they you have to you now based on this you have to tell whether what is the option now you should understand this box represents what this box represents box is represented in the form of quartile okay this is represented in the form of quartile now this is this is the whisker so this side is the lower limit and this is the whisker this is the upper limit so you have upper li lower limit this side and upper limit this side okay the data which you are representing and the middle most line normally the middle most line will be the median because you are talking about quartile now what is quartile you divide up a, up a, uh, a piece of thing into four equal parts by three intersections so q1 q2 q3 this is quartile q2 is equivalent to median the middle most part so here if I say students this this is a whole box is quartile so this line which ideally should be in middle ideally it should be in middle so it is median okay it should be median but what is shown here the line is shifting towards lower end side so this is the this is the understanding now how to interpret this as I said this is the lower limit this is the upper limit you have this q1 as i said quartile 1 q2 which should be here but it is slightly shifted this and you have q3 here now based on this you can say q3 minus q2 this q3 minus q2 is definitely greater than q2 minus q1 so once you get this type of questions where you have to interpret the box and whisker plot just see this line ideally this this line should be here medium middle but it is not it is towards shifted this side so q3 minus q2 obviously this part is greater than q2 minus q1 so when you get this type of thing so it becomes positively skewed okay so you may get this question in statistics so you have to understand how to interpret this so first of all we should know what is this this is box and whisker plot this the box is the quartile which i am saying q1 q2 q3 this is the lower limit this is the upper limit if this line comes this side this side then what will happen your q3 minus q2 will be less than q2 minus q1 so it will be negatively skewed okay now let's let's take the next question to understand the skewness in a better way <coughs> because then then skewness positive skewed negative skewed you will understand and you, it will not be a problem just see this graph this is the graph a b and c you have to just say what is a what is b and what is c is it a is a mode b is median c is mean or a is mode b is mean c is median just a study was conducted to find out number of positive lymph nodes in a population of a breast cancer patient who underwent axillary dissection a graph was plotted between the numbers of frequency of positive nodes which of the following is the correct statement so a is mode b is median c is mean a is mode b is median so this types of question you can it comes so if i can see many students have answered a a is mode sharuk raza shruti harish harish has answered b okay a so there can be let's take this let's try to understand if you get this type of thing then how do you understand okay so the answer is a now let's try to understand this oh wait let me use the pen yes then i will be able to write you know so if the answer is a b c 
so means what c is mean c is mean means c and c is mean b is uh, median a is mode now let's try to take this i'll just take example 49 50 and 51 students just take this three number add this number so it is 150 divided by 3 so you get 50 as mean okay 50 as mean now what you do students you add one more digit here 60 a positive no extreme number on the higher end side now if you add this it becomes 190 and you divide by 4 it will be definitely more than 50 it will be around 52 some something around 52 53 whatever so just because a number has been added on the higher end side on the higher end side what has happened your mean has increased see initially what it was it was consistent 49 50 51 so there was no uh, no means there was no difference no positive outlier or negative outlier extreme factor was not present so you had a consistent data you had a consistent mean the moment you added this 60 now your mean has been dragged on a higher end side you see this what is this is positive skewness so you are you having your mean here your median here your mode here okay now let's take this Yeah, this is positive skewed. Yes. Now coming to the negative skewed, just take this 49, 50 and 51. I'll add one more number on the lower end side. Now this is 40. Okay. Now what will this 40 do? It will drag the mean on the lower end side. So this is your mean, this is your median, and this is your mode. So this is negative skewed. okay is it clear is it clear now Shahrukh is it clear just take even if you you are not able to uh, you know interpret the graph just take this example and now then interpret it then I think it will be easier for you to understand this is 40 this is 49 50 you have added a value on the lower end side and which is not consistent with this data if you calculate the mean it will be legged it will be less so it is dragging this side so your mean will be less so it is negative skewed okay now students community medicine is so interesting people have made it tough it's not tough now you see this if you talk about skewness what is skewness thing which is dragging it so median doesn't get affected by the extreme values mean only gets affected by the extreme values so when you put give a value on the higher hand side it will drag the mean on the higher hand side if you put a value on the lower hand side it will drag the value on the lower hand side the mean so that is that is skewness so above this is negative skew this is positive skew okay great now this is the easiest one identify the picture and just tell me what it is identify the symbol as given in the photograph is it organ transplantation act it is rti act it is mtp act 1971 it is narega act 2005 narega manrega whatever you say so you can see the persons are working 100 is also written so they are basically you know involved in in the local road constructions village work and all so if you see this question it is not definitely it's not an organ transplantation act definitely it's not an rti act mtp act if you see the picture also the persons are working you know planting plant plantation is going on is digging the you know, the floor digging the ground and you know, the labor is working here so this is something related to work if it is something related to work it cannot be organ transplant even if you don't know narega manrega whatever so it is an organ transplantation act you cannot answer this rti act you cannot answer mtp you cannot medical termination how it is related to that so the answer becomes uh, narega 
okay good so that is narega now can anybody identify what type of contraceptive it is picture shows picture shows it is antra now students if you know what is antra you will be able to answer if you don't know it is antra then you will not be able to answer identify the contraceptive shown in the photograph the picture shows antra what it is it is a diaphragm it is a vaginal ring it is an iud it is mpa sharuk is saying it is injectable yes it is injectable injectable means it is mpa it is written also yeah, i can see with my specs also medroxy progesterone acetate why i have given this question you will not find this question in anywhere you will not find this question i have not seen any question still asked in mcqs but why i have given this from 2017 onwards government of india has launched a program let me take the next so here the answer is mission parivar vikas oh, sorry medroxy progesterone acetate okay this is an injectable contraceptive very rightly said by shruti and everyone agrees that now can you and this is a, a contraception contraceptive which is called chaya non steroidal oral contraceptive centrochromine written everything written but the question is asked new contraceptive shown in the photograph is added in mpv mpv now what is this mpv is it mission pakwara vikas it is mission parivar vikas is it mission program vikas it is mission plan vikas in dharmender is saying injectable contraceptive is given in every 3 months yes absolutely right give one shot of inject inj antra which is medroxy progesterone acetate and call after 3 months that is the do and you know for every shot you get 100 the beneficiary get 100 rupees and the person i mean the worker who injected gets 100 rupees so government of india has given 200 rupees for you know for this uh, antra antra thing now this is this is chaya so what is this mpv so prabhat uh, dharmender is saying is not aware sharuk raja is saying mission parivar vikas yes it is mission parivar vikas now why i this question also you will not find normally you will not find it has not been asked but it can be asked because family planning then recent advances in family planning is mission parivar vikas now to explain student what is mission parivar vikas mission parivar vikas is a program which is launched for all those districts where the tfr total fertility rate is more than 3 so all those high for high hfd high fertility districts we take those districts and we have launched this mission parivar vikas there in that mission parivar vikas this two recent initial this uh, means uh, contraceptives have been added so this chaya it is a oral drug non steroidal non hormonal anti i mean oral contraceptive and then you have antra also so it is important to know about mission parivar vikas so for that reason i framed this question so that you can you should have a understanding of at least you should know what is mission parivar vikas so if you talk which, which are the highest highest high fertility states bihar up so bihar all the districts are under mission parivar vikas except patna because there all the uh, tfr is more than 3 so <clears throat> this is the reason i framed this question okay so whatever we have discussed today so first question was delhi delhi the person uh, thus one of the student correctly identified that the multiplication was uh, was you know typo error it was it was 2 it should be 2 and uh, so that is the way you calculate delhi so you should know how to calculate delhi just don't remember delhi is disability adjusted life years year loss due to life and disability adjusted okay that is the formula but how do you calculate so that is important second thing second important thing was how to correlate how to understand correlation third thing was i put only those questions which can cover remaining other questions also it's not that only these questions can be asked it should cover the entire something you know here and there also the third thing was about standard error of mean so as the sample size increases standard uh, your uh, error decreases then histogram pie chart all those things were easy then what was the question uh, then we had this contraceptions 
means Antara and Chaya and then we had Narega also. So this will help you to understand the topic and just community medicine, trust me, it's, it's, it's very interesting the moment you try to apply in the community. As Dharmendra said, Dharmendra said, it is given every three months. So if you see Antara, that is the guideline given by the government of India. A person, a lady who has taken the shot, she will be called after three months. She will get another shot. So for three months, she is, uh, means she is using that contraception. So if you think in that logic, 200 rupees are given, 100 rupees to the beneficiary, 100 rupees to the, uh, the, uh, the person who is injecting it. Then you, then you remember it. Otherwise, you, if you don't correlate with the community, you are not going to uh, remember for long term. Okay. So I hope the topic which I took, it was interesting and it would have helped, it will, it would have helped you. I know many of you were, must be knowing many things, but it was just a revision, last time, last minute revision. So I'll, I'm also taking a class at 10 o'clock at an academy that is a special class you all can join there i am discussing rntcp a national vector bond disease control program for 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 one hour so i request if you have time please join there also we can have a good discussion on rntcp rntcp you know every time every time when you talk about it, it's a huge thing so we can discuss there many things so it will help you so thank you for joining and i hope the session was useful for you uh, do take care and uh, okay do take care and bye bye